You mentioned the carbon tax, and I did just want to touch on that. Um, how do we go about um, managing climate change but not imposing a tax on everybody to do that? Have you given that any thought? I have. Um, that's always one of the first things I get asked when I say that I am against the carbon tax after they say that I'm a, a climate change denier, which I'm not. Um, we need, I don't have everything figured out, but I would like to see a plan that goes from punishing um, that, that removes my margins and makes it harder for me to be able to invest and adapt um, more sustainable technology in the way that I'm doing things to a plan that promotes that. And I recently was in Germany in November and their system is the complete opposite uh, approach. So instead of taxing to try to force people to make a change, um, and you know, when you're looking at that piece of the puzzle, uh, we are, especially where I live, we need big vehicles to get around six months of the year. We have an extremely cold climate for half the year. You cannot force so much change when there's only so much change that is, is available. We still need to heat our houses. We still need to get around. Um, so instead of punishing for what people actually have to do, um, why can we not look at a system that is, let's say, okay, you want to look at solar? And I have a friend who just looked into solar for his farm, $300,000 with very, very little rebates. So why can we not have a system in place that promotes accepting and adapting to green energy and then you lock in a system like germany where you say okay for 20 years this is what you're going to get when you sell your excess power back to the grid so you can make that investment and you can make that decision knowing that you have x amount of time where you can pay it off because that's a stable market climate for you i think that that's where we need to shift our focus because what we're seeing right now and there's some industry in saskatchewan with the carbon tax they're actually uh, what they're already doing, and there's a steel factory here, they are, their emission controls are leading edge, but the carbon tax is going to take it to a point where their profit margin just does not allow them to, to work anymore. And so the reality is that they could pack up and move to China and scrap whatever emission protocols they already have in place. And I think if we're looking at the big picture, which should be, this isn't just about Canada's footprint. This is about what's going on globally. And we need to work together and know that cause and effect and what that ripple effect is going to be of putting these in. Um, secondly, with the carbon tax, we are an export nation. We rely on our export market. And when we're competing against a lot of nations that don't have that same tax, we're, we're taking our competitiveness away, especially when it comes to agriculture where we can't pass that, uh, that expense on. So we're taking a further hit and that's only making it harder, especially when commodity prices are already as low as they are. And uh, you did mention uh, that mental health is kind of part of uh, your campaign, what you're running on. What kind of supports should the fe should should a federal government have uh, for mental health uh, across Canada or rural communities specifically? Well, I think we've started moving in a really great direction, especially with Do More Egg launching over a year ago. Um, I actually got to testify to the Standing Committee of Agriculture and Agri-Foods about mental health and agriculture. So just the fact that um, suddenly it's a topic that we're talking about is huge. That's, you know, the first couple steps that we need. And I know that there are uh, different avenues being looked into because rural is a little bit different than urban in the sense that you could have... Uh, a therapist or a counselor in the small community, but the chance of everybody feeling comfortable going to that person and people knowing that they're going to that person um, is smaller than in the city where you have more of that uh, animosity because of the larger population. So I know that they're, are looking, they're looking into different ways of maybe that's uh, like Skype with a therapist or something, a way to be able to support the rural communities in a way that they are comfortable with and working towards. And I know because this has become a topic that we are we are moving in in those directions and so it's just to continue to make sure that we do keep moving in a direction where we are um, supporting mental health and uh, initiatives to be able to support mental health and then another one important i think is that we then need to start to tackle the life insurance part of that and and that industry and get them to understand that somebody who's taking care of themselves and who has gone out and accepted that maybe they're dealing with anxiety and depression and they're seeking help, they're actually less risk and they shouldn't be treated as higher risk because they're dealing with that. So, Okay. And I wanted to chat about two ag issues that are facing uh, the industry. Obviously, the um, pulses issue with India and the now um, uh, canola issue with China. Just how does a federal government go about overcoming these issues and ensuring that uh, these products are getting to the export markets? Well, it's more than just canola with China now, unfortunately. Um, 
China is different than India um, in the sense that this isn't a trade war with China. This is, in my eyes, a retaliation for us getting involved in uh, a game that we should not have gotten involved in. Um, and China's hard. They respect strength, but at the same time, because we're not in a trade war with them, I don't know if we should be uh, retaliating in that sense. But we need this is when it comes down to having really good relations and we set up some trade contracts or the liberal government kind of finished some trade tra contracts that the conservative party got into or set up the groundwork for um but we we don't even have uh, a person in china right now who has a great relationship so it's so important with all the different countries that we're trading with that we have that good relationship established and then we're very cognitive of cause and effect of Okay, if I'm going to get involved in this, how is this going to affect every other piece of the puzzle? Because we can't afford to keep trying to set up a new trade agreement or trying to fix a trade agreement and then a year later turning around and doing something that hardly takes any time at all, but is going to take a long time for us to, to wind back the clock on. And I don't think we've seen the end result of what they're going to do. India is a little bit of a different ballgame because they have an election coming up and 70% of people living in India actually derive their main income from farming. So what's going on with the Paul situation in India, part of it is that putting the tariffs on to the pulse imports that keeps our product out, not just Canada's, this is affecting other countries as well, um, because the, the current government wants to ensure that the farmers understand that they are supporting them because they know that that is a huge they know they need them on their side to get back in. And so they, mm -hmm. he hasn't actually called when the election will be. And so that's part of that waiting game um, is there either needs to be a drought or this election needs to happen so that we can try to get back to normal grounds. And I think, you know, everyone involved with the, the Pulse Commodity Boards and stuff, um, Pulse Canada, they've been doing a really good job trying to say, okay, well, you have all these tariffs on right now. Let's deal with the issues of fumigation. We don't actually have the... Um, the the insects the photo insects that they're they have an issue with so let's try to get that off the table for now and they're working hard to do that so that then moving forward when the tariffs do come off we won't have to be uh redoing a contract every five years to get an allowance to not have to do the photo uh sanitize option so i think india is being worked on there's just so much of that that comes down to the election that's out of our control and china we just we need a better working relationship with them you know they're our largest buyer of canola products and one of our largest buyers of barley and uh, other products like pork as well. And we need to we need to be respectful of those relationships and understand our actions and how they're going to affect that, because this is this is something that could have been avoidable. And that that hurts as somebody whose bottom line is being affected of it. That really sucks. All right. Well, Megs, thank you so much for taking a couple of minutes for me today. I really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck along the campaign trail.